So, John, if you had a secret identical twin, how would you use him to your advantage? Well, first of all, I'd fire you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just podcast with myself all day. I think that would be a dream for me and the listeners, really. I mean, could you not do that already, technically? What, 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 what difference would that be to us listeners... I say us listeners, I don't listen to this thing. To this, to this garbage. <laughs> to the listeners, yes. What, yeah, what difference would that make to them? Well, I could bounce off myself a bit more. It's hard to have a whole conversation with yourself. Although saying that, I've been alone in this flat for almost two months now, so it's getting a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> Great, so you'd you'd podcast with yourself, you'd talk to yourself, That that'd be your thing. And certain other advantages, you'd, yeah, sure. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. Whoa. What did oh, you just don't imply pretend there? you wouldn't. What did you... Oh, John. John. Mm-mm. The thought has crossed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> of course it has. You're only human. Welcome everybody to Beyond the Box Set, the podcast where today we are pitching prequels, sequels and spin-offs to The Prestige. We'll also be pitching some drinking games and hearing from our listeners with the submissions they've posted on our Facebook and Twitter pages. But first, we're going to talk about some of our favourite moments, give a bit of a plot summary and of course get in some spoilers. That's what kind of podcast this is. I'm Harry, the host with the most unique face. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I can't argue with that. So, yeah. you know, this, it's like a Picasso. Hmm. And joining me as always, he's one of a kind, it's John Lucas. Oh, thank you. So what, we both have unique faces? Uh, yeah. Okay, well that puts us one above the people in this film, who apparently you can just pull just out a really like for any, any like, old street corner. Just yeah. whack a moustache on and you're good to go. Yeah, yeah. okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I have um, questions, we'll get to it. <laughs> yeah, of course you do. There's a big, big wig watch coming in this episode. Oh, yes. Okay, so John, The Prestige, what did you think? I've got to be honest... Didn't love this. Really? No. Like, what do you think of um, Christopher Nolan's other work? We've done a lot of his stuff on this podcast. I think I like the idea of him more than I often like the execution. <laughs> okay. I, but I have liked a lot of his films. I thought Memento was great. I thought Dunkirk was really well executed. Mm. I even quite liked Interstellar, although that got really wanky at the end as well. Mm. I think I had similar problems with this than I had with Interstellar. But I thought this was worse because Interstellar was wrapped up in a whole sci-fi conceit about, mm. you know, we must save the universe by traveling through multiple dimensions. And okay, that'll kind of give you scope for anything, really. Yeah. Whereas this, I was just like, I didn't really care. I think that was my problem. Like, I didn't really feel the tragedy of these two men whose you know entire lives were consumed by this bitter rivalry. mm I felt like that needed to have a real emotional punch so that you really felt it when at the end of it all they kind of... Re- well, even if they... Well, it's questioned whether they ever did see what a waste of time it had all been. But I don't know, I just... Because it was so low stakes, it was just... Oh, it's, like, it's just a bit of magic, guys. Just go and have a shag. Just stop <laughs> stop worrying about this. It's not that big of a deal. Like, you're wasting your time. Yeah, I, I, I will admit. Like, as... So I watched this a few months ago for mm. Two Geeks, Two Movies with Ross and we, we compared it to a film called The Illusionist, which is sure. also very good. Mm-hmm. And so this time round is my second time watching it, and it's good. It's a really good film to watch a second time. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. And I watched it with Louise, and yeah, she had a similar reaction to you. It's just like, oh, it's just a dick measuring contest. It, it so is. And like, yeah. as she said that, I was like, yeah, yeah, it really is. Like, they really should just sleep together already. But it's also, it's a big dick measuring contest, and that never really gets examined. No. <laughs> like, there's no... I guess the supporting characters do kind of tell them from time to time, hey, you know, there's other, there's other stuff in the world, you know. Mm. Like, but it's... I don't feel like the film ever really, like, digs into, like, the emotion behind it at all. It, that's the thing that really bothers me. It was, it's like Christopher Nolan films are so clever or present themselves as being so clever, but they just don't really have a lot of heart for me. Mm-hmm. I think that's my main problem with them. I felt, even with Dunkirk, I didn't really feel a lot with it. It was... I was impressed by it, but I wasn't moved particularly, like... By any particular character. Oh, okay, sure. Well, I felt quite differently then on Dunkirk. Yeah, no, I, I can definitely see that with, with The Prestige. It is 
maybe it's just some of his earlier work doesn't didn't quite land in the way. Like some things like Inception, I thought was incredible. Mm-hmm. It built up multiple characters really well. Sure. And told a very original story. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. He can do it. Yeah. No, I don't think this is a bad film. I, it just, it's, it's obviously really impressive. It, it just didn't make me, like, really feel anything. Or mm. or even particularly excite me in the way that, like, something like Get Out really excited me. Ah, this one still excites me. Okay. Well, I'm really, I'm really a lot of people love this film. Like, so, you know, it's to each their own. Also, yeah. I mean, let's dive straight into the, like, the, the numerous twists and turns this film takes because it's a Christopher Nolan film of course there are many twists and turns Mm -hmm. I figured out in like the first 10 minutes I was like so that's his brother wandering around in the background the guy who's obviously Christian Bale in a a beard Mm -hmm. in a stick on beard like he was in every other shot but never speaks I was like well that's just him is that supposed to be obvious do you think or is that supposed to be like no I I didn't figure it out but like the moment that guy walked into a walked into the room I was like I said out loud to Ross, that is a man in disguise, right there. Yeah. That is a man wearing a fake beard. What, at what point, sorry? The the moment that character was introduced. Oh, so yeah, it, like literally in like one of the first scenes of the film. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I wasn't trying to guess the twist. So I wasn't trying to think like, oh, who could he be? You know, what's how is Christian Bale doing this big double act? Because, mm-hmm. yeah, I guess when you try and think about it, it is quite obvious. It's just identical twin. Yeah. But... Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I didn't, I didn't guess the twist, but I clearly saw that there was something up with that. Yeah, I think again with Nolan, you're kind of primed for some kind of yeah. misdirect. Yeah. Like, was there anything that surprised you with this? Yeah, well, I mean, the second twist, I still cannot wrap my head around at all. So I don't know whether we should just get to that in the plot summary, but I have many, many questions about oh. how that worked. Okay, okay. I'm well, not sure you're going to be able to give me any answers, but... Yeah, I, 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 I'm intrigued to know what you define as the second twist, but we'll get to it. Okay. The magician takes the ordinary something and makes it do something extraordinary. Now, you're looking for the secret, but you won't find it. Because, of course, you're not really looking. You don't really want to know. want to be fooled but you wouldn't clap yet because making something disappear isn't enough you have to bring it back okay so i'll I'll do a plot summary then so how does this film start (laughs) this could be (laughs) a very long plot summary Just give us the bare bones. So you've got two magicians. Yeah, okay. So you've got these two magicians. You've got Christian Bale, you've got Hugh Jackman. They're both mm-hmm. working as, uh, oh, I don't know what you call it, audience plants for this, yeah, other, yeah. For the, for this other magician who's yeah. pretty much unnamed and isn't really a character, which is no, not at all, yeah. somewhat weird. Just some, old, some kind of old guy, yeah. So this guy's doing a magic trick on stage uh, where he dunks his assistant into a water tank um, that is locked. A curtain is wrapped around it, and then the, when the curtain is lifted up, she has got out of the water tank somehow. It's a yes. big magic trick. It's mm-hmm. really unimpressive to watch on film. Yeah, it kind of is. I don't know if that's <laughs> supposed to be the point, because he's supposed to be a bit of like an old hack, and that's because yeah. Christian Bale's always complaining backstage that he's doing the same old stuff all the time. And he, that, yeah. that, is that why he's trying to mix it up with the ropes? Uh, I, I don't think so, no. Okay. The, the, the reason that they're trying to mix it up with the ropes is because Michael Caine says... You're not telling a knot that's tight enough. She could slip off the um, the harness thing and yeah. break and break a leg. Mm-hmm. But then Hugh Jackman's like, "Hey, that's my wife. Um, <laughs> if uh, if you tie that too tight, then she won't be able to get out of it." And she's mm-hmm. like, "Nah, I can get out of it. It's fine." And so, as soon as she said that, I was like, "You are a dead woman walking." <laughs> 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 and so then the, the following night on stage. Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale come out of the audience again and pretend to be audience members. And uh, Christian Bale ties this this tighter knot, this new knot, whatever it is, mm-hmm. with clearly the woman's permission. Like, she yes. gives a very obvious nod. Mm-hmm. And he ties this new knot, and uh, it doesn't work. She can't get out of it, and she drowns on stage. Mm-hmm. Now, um, first of all, she drowns in a manner that I found a bit ridiculous. It was a tad, yes, because so in I think the next scene actually, 
Michael Caine then lets you know that he's quite experienced with people drowning. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we, we can get into the whole how much blood does Michael Caine have on his hands question. Yeah, in this movie. yeah, yeah. Like, how is he ever getting hired? Um, the trail of injuries and deaths behind that man in this film. Yeah, so this woman she she drowns in the she drowns in the tub. I'm going to call it a tub. Michael Caine smashes her out when she is still seen to be conscious, like yeah. underwater, like drowning, actively drowning. But she is still conscious. He not just conscious. She's screaming. This is what I really know me. She is like open mouth, just like help, help, help. Like, come on. You, you can see he's trying to not. You are, these are professionals. Mm. This is. It's not like she's. I can understand if you were drowning and you were panicking or whatever. Mm. But like, this is something they've prepped for. Every single act, Michael Caine is stood just off stage with a little a glass shattering hammer mm. and a stopwatch, ready to break her out. You know, yeah. and every second counts when you're drowning, right? And she's there, and she's literally, like, open-mouthed, screaming. So, obviously, she's immediately cut off at least two minutes of holding breath time. <laughs> Instantly, yep. like... So, Hugh Jackman does the same thing. You know, forgot to mention, the film opens, because obviously it's Nolan, so it's the time's all over the place. The film opens with Hugh Jackman also drowning in the same Oh, thing. yes, of course it does, yeah. 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 That's our opening. Under the stage, with Christian Bale watching him. Yes, and that kind of sets up the film. So, mm. we open with Michael Caine giving this voiceover about magic, and... We see Hugh Jackman performing this trick that involves him dropping off stage. Um, it's the, it's called the the transported man, isn't it? And this is the mm, one that's, that's it, yeah. this is his famous trick that him and Christian Bale have both developed different versions of. He jumps into a hidden um, hole in the stage, a trapdoor, and falls into a big glass big canister water, of water tank. Yeah. Which, big water tank, yeah, which evidently is not supposed to happen, and he drowns <laughs> with Christian Bale watching. And then we cut to like. Christian Bale's trial for murdering Hugh Jackman. And that's basically the plot. Mm-hmm. But then we flash back to what you were talking about, which is what happens next, which is when they were young men and they were working together as shills. And yes, the, the Hugh Jackman's wife drowns. Yeah, great. So like, she drowns on stage. She's still conscious when the tank breaks and she falls out onto the stage and then she's dead. And they're all pretty much like, oh no, she's dead. Oh, it's the worst thing that's ever happened. Oh. And then the next scene, Michael Caine's like, I'm not going to do an impression, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> How can you not? How is it even possible to not do a Michael Caine impression? <laughs> I wouldn't know where to start. I've not rehearsed it. Uh, he's like, I was once on a boat with someone and they drowned and they were they were unconscious for like four minutes or something and they mm-hmm. still came round. And they told me it was like, you know, just falling asleep. It was the most comfortable thing that, they, that had ever happened to them. Mm-hmm. So if Michael Caine has previous experience of being around somebody who has drowned... And is dead for four minutes, but still wakes up. I assume by some form of CPR or something. Surely yeah, somebody should have tried to administer some some kind of help towards that woman, who was conscious a second ago and is now presumed dead. Well, I would have liked it if she'd died not from drowning, but from being impaled on the glass that she kind of falls <laughs> out of. <laughs> that's what you got monster. me. Like, no, but she's like they smashed the glass and she. She literally like flies through a grass screen, not a scratch on her. Yeah. Like that would be probably more dangerous than the than the drowning part. Uh, yeah, I don't know. They've not thought this through well at all. No wonder someone ended up dead. Right? No. Um, also, why 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 is smashing through it the best thing? If it's a, a fake padlock, yeah. just open the padlock and open the tank again. Pull her out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just have a little, just have a little step pull her off the top. Yeah. Oh this is not God! A this film, film is shit. This film has holes. Many, many holes. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, then we cut to the funeral home or something. I don't know, whatever. Sure, the mausoleum, whatever, yeah. And Hugh Jackman asks Christian Bale, what knot did you tie? He's basically mm-hmm. saying, are you responsible for my wife's death or not? Yeah. And Christian Bale says, I've been asking myself the same thing, and I don't know. Mm-hmm. And there is the origin story to their rivalry. Sure. Okay, I'm going to stop you here for a second. Yeah. In terms of how we're going to proceed with this plot summary... Are we going to continue to describe the plot as the film tells us it? Or are we going to acknowledge right now what the big what the twist is? Well, I think I've already acknowledged it, haven't I? There's two of him. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't know how we can talk about this without acknowledging that there are two Christian Bales and all the questions that that kind of brings up. Okay, well, yeah. Okay, let's, let's get into that then. Two Christian okay. Bales. What do you think? Yeah. So I had many questions on this. So what transpires is that Christian Bale is a twin. Mm. There are two twins, and they are both living as one for the whole of this movie. Mm-hmm. Now, so... Okay, I'm going to rewind a little bit. So, the main part of this film is this this rivalry between Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale. It's built around 
this trick called the transported man, which is a trick that Christian Bale develops first and foremost. And it is one where he steps out of one door and then is magically transported across the stage and walks out of another door. Mm. And Hugh Jackman can't figure out how he does it. And he develops his own version of it. And it turns out that how he's doing it is that he's a twin, basically. Yeah. But then Hugh Jackman, uh, and this is only gets revealed at the very end, what Hugh Jackman does, he meets up with David Bowie mm. and uh, gets a magical... By David Bowie, John means Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla. I've I, I fictionalised Nikola Tesla, yes. Mm-hmm. Hugh Jackman gets Nikola Tesla and Gollum to <laughs> produce a magical electrical cloning machine. Mm-hmm that clones him instantly. Mm -hmm. So, was Christian Bale also a clone? Or was he just a twin? He was just a twin. He was just a twin? Yeah. Because he also knew Nikola Tesla. Did he? Yeah, there's a scene early on when... Isn't he the reason that Hugh Jackman finds out about Nikola Tesla? Because he's also been talking to him or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I took that to mean that Christian Bale was kind of like, hey, here's here's, here's a goose hunt for you. Like... You, you, so you, you're, was, you're going to spend years of your life tracking down Tesla, trying to get him to make this machine or whatever. In the meantime, I'm going to go and do my magic show. Okay, so he was just a regular twin. He wasn't cloning himself. That's what that's what I took from it because it became quite a quite a powerful thing at the end where it was just so simple. Like there's a, mm-hmm. Hugh Jackman goes on this big, complicated journey and there's cloning and there's you know science and magic and the lines are blurred and everything. And Christian Bell, it's just his twin. It's just a brother. Mm-hmm. That that's all it is. But on his side of the coin, there's massive, massive sacrifice. Oh sure. On yeah. Hugh Jackman, there's a different kind of sacrifice, and we'll get to that. But for Christian Bale, <laughs> it's just like, yeah, we each lived half a life, mm-hmm. and that's just okay. the way we did sure. it. Okay, fair enough. I wasn't clear. So I guess when he says he can't remember what knot he tied, that's because when he's asked that question, it's not him who tied the knot; it was his brother. Right? Uh, yeah, I genuinely didn't think of that. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sure. Okay. So, so, was one brother more in cahoots with Hugh Jackman's wife than the other one? Uh, yes. So, I'm going to get back into the plot summary a bit here. Okay, sure. Uh, so, Christian Bale, he started doing his own magic show. And he's got mm-hmm. this great transported man. And, yeah, the twist is, it's his brother. So... Every night after the show or before the show or something, I don't know, they switch wigs yeah. um, because he has this he has this alternate character that he plays. I forget what he, what he's called, but he's he's Christian Bale's version of Michael Caine. Yeah, basically. He just kind of follows him around in the shadows a lot. Yeah, and he wears a big beard, a moustache, a hat, glasses. Like, mm-hmm. it's very difficult to see this guy's face. Yeah, it, it's, it's very much... A disguise in capital letters. Yeah. Like it looks like a guy in a disguise. That's why I think I clocked it quite quickly because it's like this is a person in disguise. Mm. <laughs> like I mean, you said the same thing, didn't you? Like yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, eventually, during one of Kristen Bell's shows, I think maybe afterwards, he meets up with oh, I've forgotten her name, but the character was called Sarah. I don't remember the actor's name. Oh, Rebecca Hall. Rebecca Hall. That's it. His future wife. Yeah. Yes. Uh, he meets her and marries her. They have a kid together. Like this film yes. takes place over a long time yes but then after all that happens and in the midst of Hugh Jackman trying to work out Christian Bale's trick uh, Hugh Jackman sends sends his current assistant Scarlett Johansson to mm. go and spy oh yes but he says like don't lie to him tell him I've gone spy and whatever I don't really understand what Hugh Jackman's plan was here because it doesn't work <laughs> no no it was so he told Scarlett Johansson to go to Christian Bale and say Hugh Jackman told me to spy on you, but what I'm actually going to do is tell you his secret. Mm. But then she did that, but then she also did leave Hugh Jackman and just fully went over to Christian Bale's side. It was complicated. It was, yeah. But essentially, she falls in love with him, with Christian mm. Bale as well. Everybody loves I think this Christian is another Bale. Thing that, sorry, I think this is another thing that bothered me. It's that none of the love stories in this film really registered for me. Like... I mean, Scarlett Johansson has very little to do in this film, generally, other than hmm. let every English accent wander all over the hills and dales. But oh my goodness, <laughs> <laughs> that was that was rough. Yeah, but she can be yeah, a good I, actor. I'll give her that. But accent, yeah, not her strong not, point. Not, this is not her strong point. No, but yeah, it, it really felt like oh, she's in love with Christian Bale now because that's what needs to happen for this plot to keep turning. But yeah, I, I think. I think ultimately Scarlett Johansson just really didn't sell it. She wasn't good in this. No, not really. 
she, like they 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 could have got a better actor because this wasn't the high point of her career. She was. I was surprised what like a nothing role it seemed to be. She really like faded into the background in this film. Mm, mm. Mm. Rebecca Hall's, on the other hand, I really felt that one. She was good. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Christian Bale. You know, he he is two people. And little known to us at this point, each one of him is dating a woman. One of them is dating Rebecca Hall, and the other one is dating Scully Hansen. So mm. when he talks about relationships with them, sometimes he loves them, sometimes he doesn't. So like Rebecca Hall, like sometimes she'll say, like, do you love me? He'll say, not today. Yeah. <laughs> and she can tell. She can definitely tell, like, when it's him, when he loves her, and when it's not. She never works it out, but she can tell. That was my other question. It, so... Are they fully just doubling? So they're both sleeping with the wife and they're both sleeping with Scar- Scarlett Johansson. They're just completely alternating every aspect of their existence. Don't know about actual se- sexual intercourse. You know, maybe they just have an off night every other night. Yeah, because I was thinking, how identical are they? I, I don't know, John. There's got to be I, certain things that you, you know, a lover would be able to notice. <laughs> well, I guess that's why Rebecca Hall could notice. I mean, maybe Christian Bale just has perfect skin. Sure. <laughs> you know, he doesn't have a single mole or anything. Absolutely everything. Same genitalia. Not a, yeah. Just nothing different. Same technique. Everything. Everything. They, they probably they probably talk about everything like, oh, last night I tried this great thing with the missus. She loved it. Ugh. You've got to do that again tonight. These, well, two, you know, these two brothers are too close. Or maybe just like they have sex every other night. Okay. <laughs> like, you know, tonight you're having sex with Rebecca Hall. Tomorrow I'll have sex with Scarlett Johansson. All of this just to be a good... This is the thing. All of this I know. <laughs> effort just to be the best magician. Like, But, I know. The, the I thing mean, in that, my experience, most magicians don't have sex at all. So The, the thing that really gets me is... Yeah, good, good joke there, John. Um, it, 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 if it had been a good joke, you would have laughed. <laughs> oh, I was talking over you. The thing that really gets me is that there's all this for this amazing trick... Yeah. And, you know, even Hugh Jackman admits we all knew you you were the better ma- magician. Mm-hmm. But if you look at his show, his show is shit. Like, literally, the trick that he does before doing The Transported Man, he's just doing, a, like, some rings, you know, and just oh, like, yeah. oh, now the rings are inside each other. Whoa! And nobody <laughs> cares. <Yeah. laughs> That's it. They very rarely seem to have shows that go well. No. Like, Hugh Jackman's show, it's big, it's grand, there's a lot going on. You know, he's doing a lot of disappearing bird stuff, there's... I, I, I don't know what else there is, I don't show a lot of it, to be honest. But, like, you can tell that he's got the crowd, and he can entertain the crowd. Yeah, well, they Whereas even Chris, say that, Christian Bale, like... he can't entertain a crowd, he's just a guy who knows how to do magic. Yeah, they, they, they acknowledge that, don't they? They say, like, Christian Bale is the more talented ma- magician, but Hugh Jackman's a better showman. And that's why they're both kind of... Incomplete halves of the same coin, kind of. Ah, thing. I guess, yeah, yeah. Was it good? It was the greatest magic trick I've ever seen. Did they applaud when you saw it? The trick was too good, it was too simple. The audience hardly had time to see it. He's a dreadful magician. No, he's a wonderful magician. He's a dreadful showman. He doesn't know how to dress it up, how to sell it. Well, how does he do it? He uses a double. No, 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 no. It's too simple. This is a complex illusion. You only say that because you don't know the method. It's a double that comes out at the end. It's the only way. I've seen him perform the trick three times now, Mr. Carter. The prestige is the same man. No, it's not. The same man comes out of that second cabinet, I promise you. Okay, so... Well, there's a great bit in this film that lasts for about an hour, mm-hmm. and it's great for maybe the first 15 minutes. Okay. Which is just the two of them sabotaging each other's tricks. Yeah, there is a lot of the, <laughs> a lot a large portion of this film is just Batman and um Wolverine Logan and Wolverine, Batman and Wolverine just trolling each other in a, a assortment of crazy wigs and, and stick on beards. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh it gets it gets a bit silly. Mm-hmm. It really does get a bit much. Well, it's like how do they always get managed to be the person who gets picked out of the crowd in the? I other know. Person's... I was thinking that too. How on earth does that happen? Yeah. How <laughs> often have you been at a show and been that person who gets picked out of the crowd? Like... Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I don't know. Like Christian Bale's perfor- essentially performing in in pubs. He, he seems like he's doing open mic nights. Mm. So fair enough. Hugh Jackman manages to part the crowd and get in there, but Hugh Jackman's performing in like auditoriums. Mm. Yeah, that's why I wondered: was Scarlett Johansson maybe working with him the whole time? What Christian Bale? Yeah, because she'd be like, ah, she 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 would go out into the audience and like pick someone. Oh right, I see. Yeah. Could be. Mm-hmm. Maybe. I don't know. Probably not, but yeah. Could be. There's, there's lots of pick about this. Yeah. Um, there's, there was one in particular, though. So there's a few. So obviously, the reason that they both have this epic rivalry is because Hugh Jackman blames Christian Bale for his wife's death. Mm. Initially, that's what kind of causes all this. And so then they go their separate ways and start their own magician, their own magician's careers. And like you said, Christian Bale is a talented magician, but he's not a very good showman. Hugh Jackman's a very good showman, but he's not necessarily as innovative as a, music, as a magician. So they keep turning up each of his shows. It's Hugh Jackman first, isn't it? He turns up at Christian Bale's show and shoots off his fingers. Is that the first one? Yeah. Yeah, that's the it's one the, yeah, where, he's, where he's doing it in a pub. He's doing a, a bullet catch. That's it, yeah, because Christian Bale's all about like doing the high-risk stuff. And Michael Caine early on says, you don't want to do the bullet trick because all it takes is one idiot to sabotage it. It's very easily sabotaged and you can then you can get shots yeah. but Christian Bale's like no take the risk so he does it and Hugh Jackman just steps in like he does it but he chest. does it in a pub like it's a yes. completely uncontrolled environment yeah <laughs> like if Hugh Jackman did that like on a big stage you could probably maybe get a better assistant than Scarlett Johansson but you could line up who's going to be on stage sure I don't think Christian Bale plays many big stages though I think that's the point he's yeah. just doing these little back room gigs yeah but yeah he, he goes to shoot him in the chest and then Christian Bale 2.0 like pushes his hand and he ends up shooting Christian Bale's fingers off mm. but then the one after that that really got me was Christian Bale's revenge shtick is when... this the one where Hugh Dratman gets a double of himself no okay carry on then this is the one where Hugh Jackman's developed this trick with Michael Caine that involves putting a bird in a cage ah uh, yeah and then flicking his hand in a certain way that knives pop out and cut some ropes or something what <laughs> well, I couldn't understand what the trick was. Like, okay, so, so it's basi- the bird so basically, trick. basically, at the start of the film, you do see a, a bit of this. You see birds in cages, magicians crushing the cage super quick, but then revealing that the bird is fine. It's on on their hand. It's good. Yes. But then we later see that in the cleanup process, the bird was actually killed, and they were just twin birds. You know, it's all a metaphor for this film. Yes. In this trick, what he's trying to do is do that essentially with an audience member involved, with their hands on the cage as well. Yeah. And the cage crushes into nothing, and then Hugh Jackman has the bird in his hand. But the the main part of the trick is, which I guess is just for the backstage people and for us, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> is that there is no dead bird. Yes. Like, the bird is actually saved. But yeah, so in that trick's first outing, for which somehow Hugh Jackman has got an entire theatre of people to come and see this amazing wonder. Mm-hmm. It's not that impressive a trick. Even if it went well. It's not everyone that impressive. Even, everyone like boos him and says, oh, I've seen this shit before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so then Christian Bale comes up in disguise, in a different disguise, new disguise, mm-hmm. yeah. drink for disguises. Yes, oh, 100%, yeah. And uh, yeah, he just rips the cage apart, which... You know, all the springs compact and everything, and they crush the bird. They break the fingers of the other audience member who's who's, who's on stage, and mm-hmm. he loses the gig. All shit has gone down. Yeah. Like, again, how does Hugh Jackman and Michael Caine ever get another gig after that? Like, who's going to come to these shows after that? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, Just the bookings alone is an insurance nightmare. He's uninsurable. Like, but yeah, so, like, so what, what do you happens? Think of- sorry, I, just, I really don't want to let this go. What happened to the woman who, whose fingers broke? I, I, like, they I don't never know. mentioned her. Did they have to pay her any compensation? Did she just like, were they like, sorry, love, just off you go? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. John. Never, it's never mentioned again. The, the backstage afterwards, like, oh, that was annoying, wasn't it? Better not let him backstage again. <laughs> like, a woman has lost the use of her hands. Mm-hmm. Two volunteers, please, a lady and a gentleman, to hold this cage with me. I'll perform this feat in a manner never before seen by yourselves or any other audience anywhere in the world. Madam, if you place one hand on the back of the cage, one hand on the front, thank you. Sir, one hand on the bottom of the cage, one hand on the top. You should have 
spotted him. He had a lot of plates going. Oh, don't suppose they'll let us do this again? No. What do you think of the next one then, which is when Hugh Jackman's like, how does he do that disappearing trick? What? what how, how does he, he must use a double. I need a double. Michael Caine, find me a double. And then Michael Caine goes and finds him the drunkest person in London. Yes, who is also, conveniently, Hugh Jackman's identical twin. Yes. Like, not just he looks like him, he literally yeah. is the same actor. Yeah, and they, and they, it they've, they've not made any effort to make him look like... It's not like he has a beard or he's a bit fat or something like that. Yeah, I couldn't tell if it was the way Hugh Jackman was holding his face or they did some kind of effect on it. Because he definitely did, he didn't have the Hugh Jackman-like strong jawline. Like Hugh Jackman's got that very, like... Yeah, yeah. So for a second, I was like, have they just cast someone who looks a lot like a less handsome version of Hugh Jackman? But I was like, <laughs> oh no, it, it really is just Hugh Jackman. Like, yeah. But yeah, apparently people's lookalikes are just hanging around in bars, like, anywhere. Yeah. Like, can you imagine if you walked into a pub and just found someone who looked as much like you as that guy looks like Hugh Jackman? God, that'd be so weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of exciting. Let's not go back into this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All the possibilities. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so then Hugh Jackman, he has this double who's a bit of a drunk, but Michael Caine yeah. manages to train him to act like Hugh Jackman. Mm-hmm. And they start pulling off the trick. They stop yeah. pulling off the transported man. They get a good few couple of shows out of it. Yeah, essentially in the exact same way that Christian Bale's doing it, although he doesn't know Hugh Jackman doesn't know that at the time, yeah. and better because he's doing a better show. So the tragedy is that he's already bested him. Yeah, then eventually Christian Bale manages to uh, weasel his way into it somehow. He uh, whispers in the ear of a, a drunk Jackman, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, says, "Hey, you need to make some demands." And then he starts acting up, and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, he convinces drunk Jackman to blackmail uh, sober Jackman. Yeah, which also doesn't particularly go anywhere. No. Because then... They just fire him. Then at the next gig, the, ne- the next gig, what Christian Bale's done is he's removed the crash mat from under the stage for Hugh Jackman, mm-hmm. for the, the real Hugh Jackman, and he has then abducted the, uh, the drunk mm-hmm. guy and put himself in his place. So Hugh Jackman falls under stage, breaks his leg... And then Christian Bale, after a bit of a delay, gets up on stage and then just acts like a bit of a buffoon, just being like, whoa, I guess I stole this magic show. Whoops. <laughs> Better go across the road. And uh, then at that moment, the the drunk guy comes down from a wire on stage. Mm. It's a um, good prank. Saying something like, I'm stupid or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. It's a very good prank, but... Yeah, no, it's a right good prank. <laughs> it's just such a weird thing that that film keeps bringing up. But Yeah. Yeah. And so then, I guess we get into the maybe the third act. I don't know. Um, Hugh Jackman goes. Now I'm telling this linearly, but the film did the not film do jumped so. around. It's it's an it's a no linear. Uh, yeah. So Hugh Jackman then goes on a bit of an adventure. He goes on a journey and he finds Nikola Tesla. Mm-hmm. I think. No way. I've skipped a bit because of this film's linear bit. God damn it. You, if you will um, keep choosing Christopher Nolan films, they're not easy to summarise. <laughs> hey, I've not chosen a Christopher Nolan film for like two oh, years. Right, <laughs> okay, so then Hugh Jackman and Michael Caine, they work out like, hmm, what's 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 Christian Bale's friend about? The, the guy with the beard and the glasses. Mm-hmm. What's going on there? Why don't we abduct him? And then use him as... Uh, oh, what's the word? Hostage? A host- yeah, they, they bury him alive. Yeah. Yeah, so let's let, let, let's use him as a hostage. They bury him alive. Apparently without ever looking directly yeah. into his eyes and being like, oh, hey, you look strangely like Christian Bale's face underneath a stick-on wig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then they meet up with Christian Bale, who's not buried alive, and say like, hey, somehow we have, I, I have your notebook. I don't know how, but I do. They never actually explain Didn't that. Scarlett though. Johansson steal the notebook? Ah, oh, yeah, that was it. Thank you. Hugh Jackman has Christian Bale's notebook, but it needs a decoding word of some mm. sort, um, which, uh, yeah, they get out of Christian Bale. He says it's Tesla, and then Hugh Jackman's like, great, well, your brother or beard man, he's in the ground just there, here's a shovel, bye. And then Hugh Jackman goes off and finds Nikola yeah, Tesla. Played by David Bowie. Yes. Whose assistant is, of course, Andy Serkis. Yes. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so Nikola Tesla, he is building a cloning machine, yes. which... Although we don't know that's sure what it how. is, do we? I just thought it was like an electricity machine. Yeah, they didn't really explain to us what it was. But we kind of get the idea shortly afterwards. Okay. I think, or later in that storyline at least. Um, anyway, so Hugh Jackman uh, gives Tesla his hat as a, as a test to, to clone. It doesn't work. 
So Hugh Jackman goes away, but then comes back later. They try it out with Andy Serkis's cat. Andy Serkis is like, you're responsible for that animal. If that animal dies, then blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that was a great Andy Serkis. And thanks. Yeah, the cat doesn't move anywhere, doesn't disappear or anything. That's but a, it does, however, very appear outside. It's a patient cat. It was... I, 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 I did look. I looked very carefully. It was uh, trained down. The cat was chained down? As in, like, it had a little train coming out from the floor going to its car. Oh, okay. So in the movie, it's chained. It's not like Christopher Nolan chained a cat down. No, in, in the movie, mm-hmm. yeah. Andy Serkis' character chained that okay. cat to the floor. I do kind of love that in this kind of quite po-faced and serious Christopher Nolan movie, there's an extended scene that's just a cat being electrocuted and just kind of going, wow! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and so... The cat doesn't move anywhere or anything, and they're like, "Well, this is shit, isn't it? This is, this is complete crap." Then Hugh Jackman goes goes to leave, and then finds that here's a cat fighting. And he's like, oh, "Why is there a cat fighting? What could be going on?" And he has a look, and the cat is fighting a clone of itself, and there are about a million hats as well on the floor, <laughs> the, which is also the opening of the, the movie. David Bowie just kind of throws out, I guess, every time he does the trick. He's just littering all these hats. <laughs> well, I guess. Th- I, I, I took it to mean that the machine was duplicating whatever whatever subject it was given, but just like, you know, 50 metres away. Okay, yeah. And so Nikola Tesla clearly doesn't go outside of his house. Okay, so there's this, this giant and, forest and of just, top hats has just sprung up around Yeah, him. and just, just, just ne- never noticed that the machine was duplicating all these top okay. hats. He was trying to make something that was... He was trying to make a teleporter, yeah. but he accidentally made a duplicator. Oh, he accidentally made a cloning machine when he was actually act, act, when he was attempting to make a transporter. Okay. I think so, yeah. Okay, sure. Which is a whole load of bullcrap, but, you know, let's go with it. <laughs> yeah, and so then Tesla's like, all right, well, I guess that, you know, you pay me some money, um, and this machine is yours. Mm-hmm. And the next time you jump goes... a changing but- machine. Yeah, the like this world changing the machine. most significant invention the world has ever known, and he's just like, mm. well, I guess you can have this. I'm going to go wander off now and not be in the movie anymore. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yes. Then uh, Hugh Jackman has this cloning machine. Mm-hmm. He goes back, uh, buys an abandoned theatre because he seems to have unlimited money. Yeah, from all these amazing shows that we never see. <laughs> Yeah. In between, we only see the ones that go incredibly poorly, but apparently there must be a whole bunch <laughs> of successful ones for him to spend all this money. Yeah, he tests out this cloning machine. He does it just the once first, um, puts a gun nearby, mm-hmm. and he duplicates himself. Yes. He then shoots himself in the dress straight away. Mm-hmm. His his duplicate. So there is still only one of him. Okay. Why did he do that? What shoot himself? Yeah. Because clearly he doesn't have the urges that you and me do. No, putting that to one side, like, would he not even want to have a conversation? I don't understand what, what the imperative was to just immediately destroy the clone. I'm not fully sure, but what would you talk about? I don't know, like, hey, what You'd be the same like? person. Yeah. Like, you'd know literally everything that person would be thinking. So, obviously, the only answer is to shoot them. I don't know. Okay. But, I don't know. Maybe it's just like... He doesn't want to deal with it, so just, like, kill it instead. <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> I cannot be bothered with this. Boom. Bang. Well, like, they'd both argue over it, wouldn't they? They both they both want to be the magician. And then the trick is that they duplicate another one. So then there'd be three of them. And with every show, there'd be another one. And all of these people would want to be the best magician in the world. Okay, sure. I just feel like he jumps to it very quickly. Like yeah. that's a that's a chapter. That's like a twenty minute chapter of him. Like, oh, this clone's kind of out. You stayed as welcome. He's starting to like try and get what up on me. Bang. Well, you know what? In the book, maybe it was a chapter or two. Oh, but... This is based on a book, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In this, I'm I'm glad that they, they cut some bits out. Streamlined it. Sure. Okay. Fine. Yeah. As best they could. Mm. So yeah, then he starts doing this show, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. Where, like you said, he goes in the machine. The machine, uh, like happened in the start of the movie. It's uh, a trap door opens, he falls down into a water tank which gets locked, and his duplicate appears up in the stand somewhere, like an impossible distance for a man to for a man to travel. Yes. And it's a very amazing trick and everybody loves it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then his blind stagehands, they uh, dispose of the body, basically, without knowing what, what they're disposing of, because so, it's in a water tank. This is the other bit. I, I think this is the problem I had with this film, is that it... 
for two thirds of this film, it's just a like it's it's based in the real world kind of you know it's all about magicians and tricks and like slice mm. of hand and rivalries and like it's a human story essentially, and then it becomes a sci fi movie in the, in the last third and. I just don't think I wanted it to be that. <laughs> it just it just it became a different... It kind of took away all of the intrigue I had. Because mm-hmm. it's like, oh, it's just a magic movie now? I, I, I'm sure it's like... Which I'm sure is like a statement that Christopher Nolan's making. But it didn't really work for me. I mean, that was my main problem was the whole cloning thing was just... I was like, what? Okay. But, so he kills himself every night. Yeah. He drowns his, himself every single night. Mm-hmm. Just on the off chance that one night Christian Bale's going to show up and he can frame him. Uh, I think he drowns himself every night for the same reason that he shot himself that first time. Just so he doesn't have anyone to compete with. Yeah, basically, doesn't doesn't have to compete with himself. But yeah, I mean, also he does then conveniently use that to frame Christian Bale. Yes, and he gets Christian Bale put in jail because. The police find Christian Bale under the stage with this drowned man mm-hmm. um, while the duplicate Hugh Jackman goes off and lives life as some fancy lord somewhere. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, that's how the film starts to end, really. Yeah, it's, it's how it starts and how it ends, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Christian Bale goes to jail, sentenced to death. For the murder of Hugh Jackman, yes. Uh, Hugh Jackman takes Christian Bale's daughter. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, Christian Bale's wife has... I mean, before all this, actually, Christian Bell's wife has hung herself. Yes. ScarJo's ditched him as well, so he's lost everything. Yeah, pretty much. And to be honest, that's pretty much it. Christian Bale dies in jail, literally. Yeah, he gets hung. And then Hugh Jackman, after meeting up with Michael Caine once more in a very Dark Knight Rises kind of way. Mm-hmm. But you were alive this whole time. I saw your body on a bloody slab. Mm. Yeah, my... Michael Caine needs a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> the easiest Wasn't as good as the Irish accent I did last week. Yeah, and then Christian Bale discovers Hugh Jackman's, uh, well, his own personal cemetery, yes, essentially. his lair. Yeah. <laughs> Which is all the water tanks of all the different Hugh Jackman clones that there have been. And then Lord Hugh Jackman... he's got Hugh a different Jackman. water tank for every time this happens as well? Yeah, I know, right? Who's Weird. manufacturing these? Where's it coming <laughs> from? Where are you planning on keeping them all, yeah. like, long term? Where's the paper trail for all this? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's very ridiculous. And, uh, yeah, then him and Christian Bale have a big exposition conversation at each other, where they say everything that they did, and... Yeah, they explain Christian the Bale was a brother, the brother, brother the whole time. He lived ha- lived half a life, or well, they both lived half a life. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, then Christian Bale shoots Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman slowly dies. And Christian Bale goes and gets his daughter back, and... Mm-hmm. Lives happily ever after. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. Okay. Um, should we get to drinking games? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, so I just really want to finish off this plot summary. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Um, okay, so drinking games. First one I got here is drink for, of course, a wig, a fake beard, or a moustache. Just Any drink kind for of disguises, disguise. yes. Yeah. Yeah, again, I would have liked to have seen a bit more of like how they happen. Like, you know, I, they don't really go into, like, where he's getting all his beards and stuff. I would have liked to see more scenes of him, like, getting changed kind of thing. Sure, sure. But, I mean, for people who don't know the twist, that would really destroy the magic. That is true, yeah. For the majority. This film is full of surprises. Not even, like, big film changing twists, but just, like, for a single scene, you might not know who somebody is. And then, oh my god, it's Christian Bale on stage. Mm-hmm. Like, just little bits like that. I guess, yeah. Okay, drink for animal cruelty, of which there is much in this film. Mm -hmm. There's poor birds. Yeah. Peter would have a field day with this act. I know it's like pre-Peter, but my God. There's poor squashed birds. Um, Okay, drink for whenever that rubber ball bounces. Oh yes, that's the... the, There's a rubber ball that Christian Bale throws to himself as part of his act. Mm. Yeah, which is like... So he'll, he'll get into the... Uh, he'll step behind the screen, throw the ball across the stage, then step out the other side of the stage, grab it. Just a bit of yeah. showmanship, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. It it's, it's, it's a good prop, sense. that. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Mm. Okay. Drink every time a trick goes wrong. Nice. Like, yeah. I don't know how these people ever get a gig, honestly. <laughs> like, the amount of things that go wrong every time they perform in public. The majority of tricks are definitely all going wrong, yeah. A woman dies early on. 
Another woman mm-hmm. loses the use of her hand and gets it gets it crushed in a cage. Christian Bale loses some fingers. Yeah. If anything, these people should be notorious as like the, the 19th century version of Jackass or something. People should be turning up to watch <laughs> them get hurt so rather than to watch anything particularly impressive magic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Drink every time Hugh Jackman is just a big old ham. <laughs> I, I love watching I mean, Hugh that Jackman. that works for most films. Yeah, I know, but he is such... He's so hammy, bless him. Like, he's a good actor, but he is... I think because you, you give him in this film, he's playing a magician and he's playing, like, two different characters in certain mm. points. Like, there, there are some moments when he is virtually smell the fart acting. Yeah. Like, where, I think the best for me... I like it, I love his reactions when he's, like, reading the diary and having to, like, react to it. Like, how can he not know? <laughs> Just, like, <laughs> flinging the papers down. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, okay, finally, one, final one for me. Drink for wandering accents. Nice. <laughs> Mostly coming from, God bless her, Scarlett Johansson, who is terribly miscast as English yeah. lady. But <laughs> yeah, Christian Bale's accent's a bit drawing as well, isn't it? It is, but he is genuinely British. I think that's always I know, you I assume know. he's not. He's Welsh. He's Welsh, yeah. So I think he actually does sound a bit like that. I know that he's a very good actor and he can do accents very well. Oh, sure. But it's a bit jarring. It is, I know what you mean. He, I think he's one of those people who's moved to America, and so when he, even though he is naturally English, he, like, overdoes his English accent so much that it sounds phony. Mm. Also, what he's doing there is the classic kind of Cockney, I'm trying to be English. Yes. You know, Dick Van Dyke sort of thing. Yeah, weirdly, Hugh Jackman is a bit more natural with his English accent. He just sounds like he's toned his own accent down a bit. Like, he's not doing too much with it. Mm. Yeah, he's, he's quite good with... Easy accents. Yeah. He English, never, like, American. He never like reaches beyond his grasp, I don't think, with the accents. It's like... No. And then, of course, um, Michael Caine is just Michael Caine, as he is in every movie he ever does. Yeah. <laughs> that is not a man who should ever attempt to do an accent. <laughs> I'd love it if you did. Michael Caine accent. <laughs> um, okay, well, I guess we're done with that. Sure, yeah. So, before we get to sequels, listeners, um, we are, me and John, we are available on Patreon. Mm-hmm. If you think that this podcast has been good, or any of our previous ones have been you know, particularly exceptional, then consider supporting us on patreon.com slash beyond the box set. Support mm-hmm. us for as much or as little as you feel we're worth. Mm-hmm. If you do, you get a few bonus features. You get a bonus show um, about weekly. We do a film review. Right now, while we're in lockdown, we do, we're taking requests from anybody at all. You don't, need, you don't need to be a Patreon to give us a request. And we'll review whatever film you give us. Mm-hmm. Anything at all. Not porn, but anything else. We just watched a very strange 50s B-movie called The Brain That Wouldn't Die. Yeah, That's definitely that something we wouldn't normally one. have watched, but our Patreon, Marcin Gardner, uh, requested it, and so we watched it. And it was yeah. uh, it was quite something. Yeah. Um, also, if you become a Patreon, you get extended versions of our main show episodes. You know, it's a 10, 10, 15 minutes here and there. Mm-hmm. It's pretty worth it. You want a little bit of extra content, that's where you get it. You also get a 30 second advert slot on our main show if you want to. You can talk about your own podcast, your own business, whatever you feel like. Also, once a month, we do a Patreon episode. We pick a Patreon, vaguely random, and they get to choose the film for us. You mm-hmm. can guest if you want to, but you don't have to. You also get our exclusive Facebook group and just, you know, a great sense of selflessness. Yes. Because you've helped out some people in need. Which are me and John. We are so desperately in need right now, yes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. All that is available at patreon.com slash beyond the box set. And also, before we get to sequels, I just want to uh, remind you that I'm doing weekly pub quizzes live on YouTube. Mm. If you go to youtube.com slash beyond the box set um, every Friday at 8 pm British time, uh, I'm doing a new pub quiz. This coming week, it's going to be Disney. Oh, we're doing Disney next. Yeah, so there's going to be. All kinds of questions from all realms of Disney that are just Disney. Not doing Pixar, not doing Marvel, not doing Star Wars. They're just. all coming later. Okay. Um, just Disney. But yeah, classic Disney. All the way back to the 19-somethings whenever Disney started. John, you're gay, you know. Uh, thank you. Well, Snow White was 1939, I think. So yeah, 30s, 1930s, sure. Great, sure. From then until now, all of it will be included in the quiz. Whatever your favourite bits are, they'll be in it. Yes. You can't wait for the Steamboat Willie round. Yeah. Oh, God, that <laughs> film was <is> weird. <laughs> Great. So every Friday, 8pm, doing a pub quiz yes. live on YouTube. Tune in for that. 
Let's see, Alex. Uh, what do you think of Jaws, which is at 97% Rotten Tomatoes? I find it to be anti-shark propaganda. What do you feel about the Entourage movie, which is at a meager 33%? I think they finally got Hollywood right. How about It Follows, 97%. Worse than your parents giving you the sex is evil talk. How do you feel about Juno, which is at 94%? That would be a movie that celebrates a teenage homewrecker. Uh, how about Bewitch at 25%? Best television adaptation ever put to film. How do you feel about American Hustle at a towering 93%? Overwrought awards bait. Righteous Kill, 19%. The movie that Michael Mann wishes he had made when he created Heat. Sounds about right. I'm Julio. I'm Alex, and we are the Contrarians. As you can tell, our thing is that we rage against the Rotten Tomatoes machine. Regardless of what we really feel. Find us on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn. Facebook, Twitter, we're everywhere. Right then, sequels, John. So, yeah, I've gone for a kind of a traditional sequel this week, so... Yeah, I kind of got into the weeds a little bit with it. Uh, it's as twisty and turny as you might think of a... Oh, good. That's all I wanted. So uh, let, let's uh, let's see what you think. Yeah, so it's not necessarily the funniest thing I've ever written, but uh, maybe it's something that could be... Could, could be... Oh, don't undersell yourself, John. No, no, no. I mean, it's not trying to be funny. You make the listeners turn off. All right, fine. I'm just saying I've gone a little <laughs> bit more serious this week, but we'll see. Okay. So we're picking up shortly after the events of the original film. So basically, the scenario that we're left with at the end of the film is... One of Christian Bale's two twins has been hanged. He's dead. And mm-hmm. Hugh Jackman and his multiple hundreds of clones are all dead. Mm-hmm. And there's one Christian Bale left alive. Yeah. So we pick up the sequel a few months later, whatever. Having finally avenged his brother's death and ended his feud with Hugh Jackman forever, the surviving Christian Bale hasn't got much left in his life to go on with. So he decides... He's got a daughter. Oh, he gets bored of her. Screw her. <laughs> She dies of TB. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Yes, that's better because I was trying to figure out a way to get rid of her. Yes, she dies of TB. Perfectly. Great. Perfect. Brilliant. Perfect. Um, <laughs> yeah, his daughter dies. She, he's left with nothing really, so he mourns her death. Now he's got nothing to really fixate on. So he decides to seek out Scarlett Johansson mm-hmm. and try and make amends for um, you know the way he ended things with her or the way their relationship ended, mm-hmm. which was obviously he didn't love her because he loved his wife. But the dead brother loved her. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, this is all very confusing. But So he decides he's going to track down Scarlett Johansson, find out what she's doing, and then maybe tell her the truth. And say, you know, my brother did love you, but now he's dead. Mm-hmm. So he spends some time tracking her down. And it turns out she has kept in the magic game. And she's now working as the glamorous assistant for a new magician, a hot new magician on the town. A talented escape artist by the name of Harry Houdini. Ah, okay. okay Actual yeah. historical magician Harry Houdini. Mm-hmm. So once again, Christian Bale becomes fascinated by this young magician's incredible ability to escape from seemingly impossible situations. Mm. So I was thinking that um, obviously in the original film, we get this fictionalized version of Nikola Tesla, who's like obviously takes massive liberties with the life and times of actual Nikola Tesla. So <laughs> yeah. why not take equally massive liberties with the life and times of Harry Houdini? Yeah, sure. So this, obviously sure. this is going to massive, massively diverge from Houdini's actual life, but I'm just going to go with it. Mm. So I was thinking for Houdini, we could bring back another Christopher Nolan semi-regular and have him played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Nice, Because yeah. he's a little bit younger than Christian Bale, which is what you need. You need this guy to be a bit younger. He's an up-and-comer. He's not a contemporary necessarily. Mm-hmm. So ScarJo is now working for Harry Houdini and Christian Bale. Obviously, he's been hanged. He's dead. For all intents and purposes, as far as the world knows, the magician that Christian Bale was in mm. the world is is dead. So he can't do his act anymore because he's yeah. got to keep a low profile. Otherwise, he might just get hung, hanged again. You know, people might think enough, yeah. people might yeah. think that he's somehow escaped the original hanging, and he'll just get hung, hanged again. Yeah. So he can't be himself. He has to really keep a low profile. So he in, he dons one of his in, one of his wigs, one of his beards, you know, one of his suits, and sneaks into a Harry Houdini show and watches and is utterly fascinated by his ability to escape from these incredible, seemingly impossible situations. So he, Christian Bell keeps what he becomes obsessed and he keeps turning up night after night and just watching. Harry Houdini doing all these incredible stunts, like burying himself alive, uh, putting himself into a chained up chest and throwing himself into a tank of water. Mm -hmm. There were loads of crazy things Harry Houdini used to do. He used to like swallow blades, like 
everything you can imagine. And Christian Bale just can't figure out, like, how is he doing it? There's got to be some tricks to this. There's got to be some scheme that he's got that's making this all this possible. Mm. Uh, and this obsession soon takes over his life. Because he's, he's an obsessive guy. We saw in the original. These guys are all very, very obsessive people. Mm-hmm. And because his brother's dead and he doesn't, he, he technically doesn't exist anymore, he doesn't really have anything else to live for. So he starts trying to emulate the tricks himself on his own time, just trying to figure out how he's doing it. So he starts putting himself in these incredibly dangerous situations and he can't make it work. He just can't figure out how Houdini does it. Yeah. Eventually, he approaches ScarJo one night, uh, you know, Scarlet. She's uh, you know, in a darkened alley or something. He approaches her because you know, she thinks he's dead. She doesn't know. Mm. So he reveals himself to her and she's obviously shocked uh, and very confused. But he explains the whole two brothers thing. And she, you know, obviously that's going to be quite hard for her to hear, but she, she accepts it. Mm-hmm. And then once she's calmed down a little bit, he asks her to tell her what Houdini's secret is. And she refuses. She says, there's no way she's going to spill this guy's secret. She's not going to betray him. All she'll say is, he's the best she's ever worked with. And his skills make Christian Bale look like a rank amateur by comparison. Yeah. Which obviously, this drives Christian Bale into a state of even more <laughs> complete and total obsession. He can't possibly <laughs> yeah, be sure. second best. So, this is the last thing he needs to hear. So, determined to once again be the best magician there is, even though he can't technically perform in public anymore, he continues to put himself through these incredibly death-defying stunts, all of which go wrong, he can't figure out at all, and it drives him into an increasing state of just complete mania. Mm. And such is his desperation after a time that he returns to Hugh Jackman's lair and digs out the machine, which, let's just say for plot convenience, is just still there and working. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure. And I think it ends the film, he doesn't really care about it, does he? He just leaves the building on fire. Yeah. I think but so. let's say he pulls out the wreckage and manages to keep it, and it's miraculously still working. Mm-hmm. So then, like Hugh Jackman's character in the original, he starts literally killing himself night after night to try and figure out how to get out of these things. So he's hanging himself. Oh, I see, I see, yeah. He's hanging himself, he's burying <clears throat> himself alive, he's mm-hmm. putting himself in a chained up box and like throwing himself into a lake and stuff, like just mm. all this crazy shit. And he's doing this for weeks and then the weeks turn into months. Just every night he's literally murdering himself. Mm. And as you yeah. can imagine, the strain of this just drives him completely insane. Mm-hmm. Like he goes from obsessive and a little bit unh- unhinged to fully a nutcase, like just completely off the rails. I like it. Mm-hmm. All the while, Houdini's career is going from strength to strength, and he's now the most famed escape artist in the world. Him and Scarlett Johansson get married in a highly publicised ceremony, and they become the toast of the London theatre community. Nice. Meanwhile, Christian Bale is just, is just forced to watch them from the shadows with his increasing insanity, just consumed with jealousy and rage and embitterment that he can't figure out how he's doing these tricks. Mm-hmm. Eventually... He decides the only thing he can do, his last resort, is to kidnap Scarlett Johansson. So again, he waits after the show one night, like lurks in an alley, waits for her to come out alone, and at an opportune moment, grabs her, pulls her into the do- like a darkened corner, and chokes her until she's- she passes out unconscious. Mm-hmm. Okay. When she comes to, she's tied up in his basement, which is filled with dozens upon dozens of Christian Bale's own rotting corpses. Oh, God. (laughs) Because he's murdered himself so many times. He's got his own body in various states of decay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some have been burnt, some have been panged, some have been drowned. So he's just completely and utterly nuts at this stage. Mm. So he threatens to torture her if she doesn't reveal Houdini's secrets. And she still won't budge. Despite all his threats, she refuses to give up her husband's secrets. So he's left with no recourse. All he can do now is he writes a ransom letter to Houdini saying, I've got your wife, come to this address, whatever, if you ever want to see her again. So the young magician gets this note, and he's obviously very concerned about his wife going missing, and he agrees. So he goes down to the basement, he walks into the trap, essentially, and discovers that this madman's lair, in which his wife is still tied up, chained up in this basement, full of like rotting corpses, and mm-hmm. Christian Bale's there. And, he, and Houdini is just completely shocked, and he's, he instantly agrees to reveal the secrets in order to have his wife back safe and sound. He's like, yeah. love is more important than magic. I don't care that much. You, you can have it. It's fine. Just, just, just don't hurt her. And so he reveals his secret and he says, his secret is, it's just smoke and mirrors. I'm not really doing any of these things. It's just sli- <laughs> it's sleight of hand. It's, you know, it's really basic magic stuff. It's just like clever use of mirrors and, you know, essentially it's nothing particularly 
innovative. It's just mm-hmm. well executed. Mm-hmm. And the re- the thing is, because Christian Bale spends his entire life in this obsessive competition with Hugh Jackman, where they were both trapped in this kind of spiral of escalating insane feats of magic, mm-hmm. that he's lost sight of the basic stuff. And he hasn't seen what was right in front of his eyes, which was that the tricks Houdini's are doing are just simple illusions. But that never occurred mm-hmm. to him, because he, in his own mind, everything has to be real, because he's dedicated his entire life to magic he thinks everyone who does magic must be the same yeah so now he realized that actually he's just massively overanalyzed the whole thing and wasted his time and and destroyed his his own sanity to absolutely no end whatsoever so christian bale crumples to the ground he's a completely broken man like hugh jackman he's now lost absolutely everything and it's all been for nothing his entire life is just in ashes Mm -hmm. and in a fit of fury he shoots houdini and houdini just falls down dead Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's not really how Houdini died, but like I said, I'm taking liberties. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sure, sure. He, yeah, so he shoots Houdini dead and just collapses to the ground in this complete broken state. Behind him, Scarlett Johansson bursts out laughing. Oh. Yeah. He turns around and she's mysteriously gotten out of her chains. Oh. Not only that, she's transformed before his very eyes. She's no longer Scarlett Johansson. She is now David Bowie. <laughs> well, she would be David Bowie if David Bowie had not very selfishly died a couple of years ago. So I'm thinking okay. Tilda Swinton. You know, yeah, great. standard, who's yeah. going to play David Bowie? It's Tilda Swinton. Yep, Tilda Swinton good. doing a David Bowie impersonation. So <laughs> this is where we get the final twist. And the, the, there's going to be a load of exposition here, which I won't bore you with. But basically I thought the twist could be the very Nolan-esque twist at the end of this sequel for me mm. is that we discover through flashbacks and through Scarlett Johansson slash Tilda Swinson slash David Bowie's exposition at this point that all along Nikola Tesla and Scarlett Johansson, the magician's assistant, mm. were both manifestations of the devil. <laughs> so now stay with me on this. Bear with me. <laughs> because they were both encouraging Christian Bale and Hugh Jackman to kind of ruin their own lives just through like gentle encouragement. Mm. Like David Bowie gives Hugh Jackman this insane device that he uses to like kill himself night after night, and he says, mm. "You know, you probably shouldn't use it because it's not, you know, obsession's not very healthy." But you, you, you make the choice. That's I'm just going to disappear now. Mm-hmm. And Scotty Hansen's always like, "Well, I guess I, I don't really agree. But I could help you." You know, <laughs> there, there's a lot of points in the original movie where I felt like they were both kind of enabling in this weird kind of way. Yeah. So I thought it'd be a really good trick if actually they were both manifestations of Satan. <laughs> that were just like playing with these guys purely for their own amusement, driving these men to insanity and watching them destroy each other just for fun. I like it a lot, yeah. Yeah, and that, and so the devil then, as Scarlett Johansson or as David Bowie, whatever, she kind of moses out of, the, out of the dungeon, leaving Christian Bale in a heap on the floor, just like completely and utterly shattered. And, and Christian Bale, all he, all he can utter is, you destroyed my life. And she says, just as the final line, she says, no, I didn't. I just gave you enough rope. And then that's the end. <laughs> Very good. Mm. Yeah, no, I like that. Good so ending. That was uh, that was the Prestige Two Smoke and Mirrors. Smoke and Mirrors. Mm. I like it. Yeah, yeah that works a lot. Um, very good. Should I, should I get to mine? Sure, go ahead. Beat that mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you said it was good. Dickhead. Be fool. So the Prestige 2, the final act. The final act. Okay, so is this act four? Because we've got the, gl- what is it? It's like the glimmering, the glowering, and the prestige or something. There were like three different acts that had silly names. Like. <laughs> uh, the, the pledge, the turn, and the prestige. Okay, so is this what you're doing is the fourth one that comes after the prestige? It's just a title for the second movie. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> Read too much into it, fine. <laughs> don't look, yeah, don't look, don't go too deep into it. Okay. <laughs> fine. I mean, it, like, I, I would have liked to have done something like that if I could have thought of it, but I, I really, like, I did try. Sure, no, 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 no. I have like, every for, faith for, in for a while I was thinking, like, okay, the pledge, the turn, the prestige, maybe I do, like, so the prestige is the final one, but that was the first film. Maybe I do a Christopher Nolan thing where, like, the second one is the turn, and then the thir- and then the third one. Oh, is the so pledge. it's a chronology thing, yeah. Yeah, but then I, I just I didn't have an idea to to go with the title, so I just thought, bugger it, I'll just mm-hmm. 
I'll do what I, what I can. Sure. So, yeah, this is a good story, by the way. I've, I've, I've not, have I've every not faith in you, Harry. Um, so, we start off with a queue outside a theatre, and inside is Christian Bale doing magic. Okay. Like, as his show builds up. general magic? Just like, uh, slice yeah. of hand? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 any that birds sort of thing. being but like, crushed? It, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Okay. Little tricks, just little, little okay. ones. As his show builds up, he concludes it with the transported man trick. Mm-hmm. He's still doing it. It takes him a bit of time because he's just doing it by himself now <laughs> and it actually consists of him running underneath the stage quite quickly. Has <laughs> he become a bit sad now he's lost his brother? Is he this like kind of washed up hack who can't really do yeah, it anymore? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Like he's... You know what? Maybe it didn't start with a queue outside a theatre. Maybe it started with like, you know, the, the, the rope that you get next to a queue but there were only like two people. Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> People walking out rather than walking in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> However, in the audience is a mysterious figure wearing a hat, wig, beard and glasses. Mm-hmm. Exactly how Christian Bale's disguised twin used to look. Ah. As Christian Bale looks onto the audience as they applaud him, he spots this man and gets very confused. The man isn't applauding and he gets up and leaves. Christian Bale doesn't think any more of this. He carries on. The next time he does this show, that man is there again. And the next time, and the next, the following show, he's gone. Ooh. He's not there. There's an empty seat. And on this show, things start to go wrong. Only little things at first. Things like props, which he was going to use later, they start falling over, falling off things. But these mistakes, they get a little bigger and bigger as the shows go on. Until one show, when it comes to the transported man trick, he tries it. He throws the ball from the left cupboard to the right cupboard as he runs below the stage but the ball ricochets off something invisible and out into the audience, somewhat ruining the trick. It's only small, but it's not great. The following morning, when he's reading a paper, looking for, well, anxiously looking for reviews of the show, mm-hmm. he finds news that Michael Caine has passed away. Oh, no. By the way, I'm just going to use actor names. Yeah, no, I did the same. It's This is confusing enough. I mean, th- this original film is confusing enough about getting into all the multiple characters' names played by the same actors and th- yeah. <laughs> the different, you know aliases that they have and you know i think hugh jackman plays like four different character names in this movie because there's like <laughs> the great danton there's algiers or whatever he's really called and then there's mm. also roddy mcdowell or whatever the drunk one is <laughs> <laughs> roddy mcdowell it was something right. like that i don't know um anyway so michael kane has passed away mm-hmm. and all his possessions are going to auction okay so Kristen bell rushes down to the auction house and dramatically pays over the odds for Hugh Jackman's cloning machine. Ah, okay. He takes it back to his warehouse or whatever, sets it all up and says, this is for you, Sarah. Sarah's his dead wife, right? Yes. Okay. And then he clones himself. Okay. He has missed his twin for the years that they've been apart. Oh, and okay. even though this clone will have the exact memories of him, not his twin, because him and his twin, they originally lived just two halves of the same life, this clone will do. Uh, okay, I like that idea. Like he's trying to get back Basically what he's like having his twin back. It's not exactly right, mm-hmm. but it's most of the way there. Okay. Because him and his twin, they were the same person, basically. Yeah, essentially. So there's now two of them again. So he can go back to doing his trick, his trick properly again. Nice and fast. No more running under the stage for old Christian Bale. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but things start to go wrong again. Is he things doing during- the version that he used to do which was yeah. just... So he's not doing the Hugh Jackman version where he's killing himself every night? No. Okay, sure. He didn't want to do that. Yeah, that's Hugh Jackman's trick. He wanted sure. to do his own trick. Sure, sure. He just used Hugh Jackman's machine to get his twin back. Okay, I get it. Yeah. But yeah, things start to go wrong again. Things during the show and during the main trick as well. Maybe these so people just point... aren't very good magicians. <laughs> <laughs> so at one point he throws the ball and uh, closes himself in, in, the, in the left closet. His twin is waiting in the right closet. Um, only for his twin to find that the the right closet's door has been locked from the outside, therefore Ooh. ruining the trick completely. He can't get out. He's stuck in the closet. Eventually, the twin in the right closet does manage to break out the door, but about a minute has passed. The rubber ball is long gone, and the trick is completely ruined. Oh, no. There is a confused smattering of applause. <laughs> Some people still applaud, even though it blatantly didn't work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the dressing room after the show, they are talking about what went wrong each blaming the other. A row breaks out. The row turns into a fight, and the fight turns into a murder. (gasps) 
So Christian Bale murders his his own clone? Yes. He stashes the body under the stage, hidden in small tanks or something. Mm-hmm. Goes home, and in the morning, clones himself again. This ah. time, going into it in the right frame of mind, that like, I'm not going to have a fight tonight. It's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Like, even if things go wrong, going to deal with it well. Oh, I see. So, he does that trick again that night. And when he gets into the left closet, not only is the right closet locked again, but so is the left. They both get stuck in the closet. <laughs> they get in a fight later. Another murder. Oh, the symbolism. <laughs> These clones, they're just not as good as a twin. They're too argumentative. Mm-hmm. Probably too similar. Probably something to do with both identifying as the original host, despite neither of them ever knowing if they, they were the original or they were just a clone. Mm, good point. Maybe they're just lying rotting under the stage. End of part one. Okay. Part two. There's only two parts. I don't know why I did a part one. Yes. Like <laughs> this isn't like one of those 43 different idea weeks, is it? No. No, no, no. Okay, okay so part two. We start with Hugh Jackman. Mm-hmm. He is again traveling in the Americas looking for scientists to give him tricks. Um, this actually takes place during the original movie. Oh, okay. So it's a flashback. He's not just alive again. Correct. Okay. Um, while he was having doubts about Tesla's machine. So if you remember. In the first film, Tesla, Tesla did a few tests which didn't quite work out the sure. way they planned. Mm-hmm. And I think there was a bit of a time jump between. So during that time, Hugh Chapman is looking for Thomas Edison. Ah, okay. If Tesla can't do this, I'll go to Edison. Everybody knows Edison's really good. Mm-hmm. So yeah, eventually he finds Thomas Edison. Do you have any idea who I, who we should cast? As Thomas Edison? Mm. I mean, what did he look like? No idea. No. But like David Powie's Counterpoint. Well, if it's David Bowie playing Nikola Tesla, then surely Thomas Edison should be played by Mick Jagger. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's perfect. Thank mm. you. Very good. I have no idea what age he should be or what he looks like or anything. You know what um, Mick Jagger looks like, though, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Edison claims to have the machine that Tesla has been trying to build for a while. Mm-hmm. A machine capable of duplicating any object, even if it's alive. Mm -hmm. So, Hugh Jackman tries out this machine by getting in it and becoming the first human tester. Unfortunately, it does not work, and it nearly kills him. So he leaves, saying that Tesla's machine is far superior and much closer to completion. Mm -hmm. Out of bitterness, Edison goes to Tesla's mountain and burns his lab to the ground. Ah, so that's where we get the motivation for that little plot twist. Yeah. Okay, sure. All right, so then cut to black for a few seconds. And then, after a bit of a recap of the original film, maybe, we get Hugh Jackman, after dying, Okay. waking up in Edison's lab. Oh, so he was cloned. He's confused, so he tries to talk to someone, but his words go unheard. He tries to touch somebody's shoulder or pick something up, but his hand just falls through them. Is, Is Hugh Jackman a ghost? He then quickly works out that he is dead and that he is now a ghost. Mm. Okay, I think Hugh Jackman would have a lot of fun playing a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, Edison's machine must have, instead of cloning him, changed something in him to make his soul immortal, but clearly not his body. Mm-hmm. So, he goes on a standard ghost journey, you know, trying to trying to move things and stuff like that, but he works out that it takes a lot of energy, a lot of concentration to move just the smallest of thing. Mm-hmm. But... He's got time, so he just does that. He spends years learning that, and eventually he travels back to England to How find and haunt. To travel? Uh, I, I I don't know. I've, <laughs> I've not really th- I've not I've, I've not really thought about it. Maybe he gets on a boat, but sure. <laughs> I'm especially like trying to get onto it and just like falling through it or something. <laughs> yeah, maybe. In, in which case, maybe he just you know walks along the seabed or something. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> I don't know. Regardless, yes. he gets back to England, um, and he he wants to find and haunt his nemesis. Christian Bale. Of course. When he eventually arrives there, he finds that Christian Bale's show has... It's started to become a massive thing, but has terrible ratings. Oh, no. What? It's massive... Christian but- Bale is now the laughing stock of the town. Oh, okay. He is this failed magician who everything always goes wrong, and it's now just come across this massive slapstick thing. Oh, I see, because he keeps messing up. Now that's because he's on, he, the draw. He's on stage trying to do all these... Mm-hmm. fantastic tricks and everything but everything just keeps falling over doors are getting locked and everything so he's broken. like tommy cooper kind of thing yeah okay i see so he doesn't know it he's more popular as a crap magician than he ever was as a good one 
Yeah. Oh, I like that. It's really good. So then Hugh Jackman, he tracks down uh, Kristen Bell's like warehouse or base or home or I don't know, whatever, mm-hmm. and uh, tries to find him after the show. Uh, he walk he walks in, and Kristen Bell is there, and he's looking absolutely terrified, as there are so many various objects around the room that are just flying around <laughs> and haunting him. And then Hugh Jackman realizes if he's been brought back as a ghost because he's dead, then so will the hundreds of clones that he made of himself. Oh, so Christian Bale's being haunted by the hundreds of versions of himself that he's murdered. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I like it, I like it. And so then, through Hugh Jackman's eyes, we get a shot of all those clones, all those different versions of Hugh Jackman, all haunting Christian Bale at once. Oh, amazing. Which I think would be hilarious. Yes. (laughs) So we've got all kinds of different Hugh Jackmans, all different kinds of roles that they're hearkening back to. Sure. You know, maybe somebody's singing in French, (laughs) maybe somebody else is howling like a wolf, you know, there's all kinds of stuff like that. Right. And, uh, you know, just Hugh Jackman being silly, you know, just going, Ooh, and you know, carrying objects around Christian Bale and just teasing him generally. And yeah, then our Hugh Jackman, he, uh, he, he walks in, starts singing about Michelle Williams and circus stuff or whatever. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then another Hugh Jackman walks in and another and another and another. And it's just like an endless stream of clones that are coming in. Mm-hmm. Clone ghosts. Clone ghosts. Mm hmm. And then Christian Bale somehow works out that they are all ghosts of Hugh Jackman. And his reaction is to well, probably shout at him first, hmm. but to run into the cloning machine to try and duplicate himself. So he thinks like, hey, maybe I'll be able to fight more ghosts if there's more of me. Okay. Seems flawed, but whatever. <laughs> um, unfortunately, as he does this, all the Hugh Jackman ghosts, they rush into the cloning machine as well. And there is a very ex- unexpected outcome. Have they been blended? <laughs> To be continued. (gasps) Immediately. Um, (laughs) So when you mix Edison Tech and Tesla Tech together, and you combine that with the biggest rivalry that ever was Mm -hmm. in this world, shit goes down. I can imagine. So instead of duplicating one Christian Bale and 100 Hugh Jackman clone ghosts, it instead does the the opposite, and it combines them, just like you said. Mm -hmm. They come out of the machine, not as one person, But as two identical twins that look like the exact combination of Christian Bale and Hugh Jackman. Now, is this like if Christian Bale and Hugh Jackman had a baby, or is it like a Harvey Two Face situation? No, the 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 former. If they had, so just we're using like CGI to kind of blend their features. Yeah, you know, maybe they've got Hugh Jackman's nose. Sure. Um, Christian Bale's body, Hugh Jackman's voice, that sort of thing. Oh, quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Get attractive. Um, yeah, so they are. Yeah, uh, so they are identical in every way, mm-hmm. even down to the missing fingers on the left hand. Oh right, yeah. And as life goes on, living like this, they decide to destroy the machine. There's only the two of them. They can't do anything about it. Do they actually they destroy, really get on? They destroy the machine. They don't get on. They hate each other still. Oh, okay. Basically, one of them is Christian Bell, one of them is Hugh, Hugh Jackman, but they have the same body. Oh, okay. But mentally, they're still bitter. Yeah, rivals. mentally, they're still individual. Oh, okay. But yeah, they destroy the machine. And they decide that the only way that either of them can live their life and feel fulfilled is for them to go back to magic. Mm-hmm. Go back to true magic, not this newfangled science magic. Okay. And the film finishes with them doing a new routine of the transported man. But the two of them working together on the same trick. Oh, even though they still hate each other? Yes. Okay. They're well, stuck they're like of- this. It's the, the, the only way they can live is by doing magic, and the only magic they can do... Is the transported man. Oh, I like it. So they're kind of trapped. And the, and the only way they can do that is to do it together. Okay. No, that's good. Like they're, they're, they're so completely tied together in by this rivalry that they can never really escape it. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. good. I like it. Interesting. Yeah. I like so that was The Prestige 2, the final act. Very, very good. I think that's... Uh, yeah, I can see that, definitely. Yeah. I, I, like, I like the idea of two identical Christian Bale, Hugh Jackman hybrids. I think that'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> Yeah. There's a lot you could do with that. Christy Hugh Jack Bale. Christy Hugh Jack Bale. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like some kind of weird supermodel, sure. <laughs> Christy Hugh Jack Bale. Yeah, maybe we should call it that. The Presto used to Christy Hugh Jack Bale. Christy Hugh Jack Bale. R- rolls off the tongue. I can see it on the posters. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so what shall I do listen submissions? Go for it, yeah. I dread right, to have got, got this week. I've got a fair few, but I've edited them right down. Oh, thank you. Thank you. 
the first the first one I got here, Callum Reed says the Prestige Two Attack of the Clones. Very good, very good. Bit on the nose, but sure. I, I've had that from multiple people. Sure. Jack Hargreaves says if it was a prequel, it would be about Hugh Jackman's character gathering his various magical tricks and props. I call it Magic the Gathering. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, very good. Emily Halley says, has no one said the postige? Ah, prestige. And then prestige. Tim Street has said, a trilogy. The prestige, as in the prestige, the stage, <laughs> and the postage. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Absolutely, I can see that, yeah. Uh, four people have all pitched this one, one of them being Ross Burton. Of course. You know, that creative mind that I sometimes socialise with. <laughs> if they made two prequel films, they would obviously have to be called The Pledge and The Turn. Ah, okay, sure, yeah. Make yeah. that trilogy, yeah. Yes. Uh, Nick Falconer says, Death of a Top Hat Salesman. <laughs> I like that. That's good. Uh, Xavier N- Nunez, maybe? I don't know. Sorry. Um, it would be called The Pressed Cheese. It would be about cheese and magic and cloning. Sounds like a you pitch. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, Ben Halbrook. I normally skip over these ones, but in this case, it's been quite good. Too Fast, Too Prestigious. That's actually that works. That genuinely it does, works. doesn't it? Yeah, that's what I thought like too. Too like, fast, too furious. If it won an Oscar, it'd be too fast, too prestigious. Yeah, <laughs> nice. But then on the other hand, you've also got Stephen Crabbe saying too prestigious, too preposterous. Mm, I prefer the first one, but good effort. Okay. Good effort. Yeah. Um, and finally, last one I got here. Ahmed Ali has pitched the Prestige Two: Dawn of the Rise of the War of the Prestigening, but now with triplets. Plot. Well, Hugh Jackman spends two hours, ten minutes in old-timey Europe trying to find a reasonably priced warehouse with good security, but also in a part of town where people don't ask questions to store all the dead Hugh Jackmans. (laughs) The whole movie will be him just negotiating with ever-increasing cockney blokes with bad teeth. But also, the twist is, Christian Bale is back, and now there's three of him. One fat, one worryingly skinny, a woman with a silly husky voice and a penchant for dressing as a bat. Mick Jagger will all play the role of David Bowie playing Tesla. I need to stress he won't play Tesla. He'll play David Bowie playing Tesla. Okay. I like all of it. Yeah, I like that. that was, so that's a comment on Christian Bale's obsession with changing the way his body looks with the fat one, I the guess, thin one, yeah, and the Batman so, one. Yeah, okay. yeah a, lot of, a lot of that sort of stuff. It's yeah. quite a silly one. In, in yeah, no, I like that. That's good. Very good. Very strong. Yeah. That, that it? That's all I got, yeah. Okay, got? I have some as well. Spencer Cop said, The Greatest Clone Man. <laughs> oh, okay, mm-hmm. yeah. Mike Sands said, It's the story of the poor bastard that bought a warehouse and what happens when he discovers a series of covered barrels within. <laughs> so that poor guy who discovers all the dead Hugh Jackmans, yeah? Yeah. Dalton Runberg said, They reveal that they cloned David Bowie and it makes everything in our actual world okay again. So, oh, I think that's just a wishful thinking that David Bowie was still alive there. Yeah, yeah. Kevin Douglas just said, One of the clone Hugh Jackman gets left alive and goes out for revenge. Cinema Adventure Pod at Cinema Adventure. Pod said, The Prestige 2, Revenge of David Copperfield. <laughs> okay. And finally, my personal favourites, Alex Gradette said, The Prestige 2, Too Many Top Hats. <laughs> nice. Yes. Yeah. Nice. So, those were our listener submissions this week. We ask for your listener submissions every week, a few days before we record, by putting posts out on Facebook and Twitter, where you can post your ideas. So make sure you like and follow our pages if you don't want to miss out. To listen to more episodes of Beyond the Box Set, you can subscribe and browse our back catalogue on any podcasting platform, including iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and many others, all of which you can also leave a five-star review. It really helps us out, so please consider that. As mm-hmm. mentioned before, we're also available on Patreon, which is exclusively for the people who would rate, who would rate us five stars or more if they could. You can find all the details of that in the description below or at beyondtheboxset.com. And next week, Harry, I believe it's a me pick. Yeah, it is. What what you got for me then? Okay, so this is kind of inspired by our recent Patreon uh, when we did uh, the brain that wouldn't die. Mm. We're not doing that. Don't worry. That that, that door is closed. <laughs> but that really put me in mind of a, re- a film I wanted to do for a while actually. So I just thought, why not just get it out there? Because uh, it's a film about a, an infamous nineteen fifties B movie director. But don't worry, it wasn't filmed in the nineteen fifties. It's a film from the nineteen nineties. So or okay, possibly eighties. Okay. No, I think nineties. Anyway, it's a film. <laughs> By Tim Burton, called Edward. Ah, uh, you did talk about this recently, yeah. I think. Have you seen it? Nope. Good. I think you'll enjoy it. It's an enjoyable film. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah. So, listeners, you can join us next week for Edward. And just a reminder, Disney Quiz, this Friday, 8pm, 
youtube.com slash beyond the box set. Yes, do check that out. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, previously, I've done Star Wars and Harry Potter. They've, they both went down. I very, can't very believe well. five million people tuned in for the Harry Potter one. I know. It, I I was blown away by that. Yeah. I genuinely didn't 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 expect that. <laughs> um, wait, sorry. Did he say million with an M? It was it was five billion. Five with a billion. B. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I mean, at a certain point, I just was couldn't even keep track anymore. But yeah, yeah. incredible scenes. But yeah, so tune in for more of that. Yeah. Magical. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks for listening, everybody. See you next week. See you next week. Or see you on Friday. See you on Friday. Bye. Bye. You want to be 